it's good to see you again on this latest episode of Culture Mosaic. And as usual, we'll be updating you on the local culture scene before giving you a closer look at stories that feature the people, places and events that are embracing parts of Vietnamese culture. In today's edition, we'll take a look at how artisan from a small village in a suburban area of Hanoi preserves and develops royal embroidered designs. And later on is a story of success uh, from a world-renowned female Vietnamese-born guitarist. And at the very end is some hip-hop moves with Pokemon, a world champion dance crew from France. Stay tuned. Dong Village revised royal costumes. Internationally celebrated overseas guitarist returns to Vietnam. French dance crew fuses hip-hop and silent films. First, let's review some of the notable events that took place over the past week. Now, the Vietnam's Music Sense Association has released some 80 new songs about the country's seas and islands in a collection titled Dậy Sóng Biển Đông or Ways Rising in East Sea. Association Chairman Đỗ Hồng Quân says the group singled out the songs from more than 100 entries submitted by musicians from across the country in response to a campaign to write works highlighting the nation's sovereignty over the seas and islands. The first volume of the series features songs about Vietnam's marine police, fishermen, submarine, naval and air forces. An exhibition on Vietnam sovereignty over the Parcel and Spratly Archipelagos opened at Thuận An Border Post last weekend and runs until this Friday. Many maps, books and official documents are on display at the exhibition, including bronze censors dating back to the early 19th century Mạng Dynasty, confirming Vietnam sovereignty over the islands and waters. In addition, pieces of sovereignty stones are also on display to remind young generations about patriotism and the spirit of solidarity in defending the country's sacred sovereignty. Items on display are collected by several Vietnamese historians and researchers, providing more historical evidence of Vietnam sovereignty over the Parcel and Spratly Archipelagos. Hue is well known as a tourist attraction in Vietnam, and a souvenir contest has been launched in the province to promote craft villages and their fine art and handicraft products. Its goal was to also praise artists and artisans for researching and creating new souvenirs based on local cultural characteristics. This is a paper lantern featuring a folk painting from Singh Village by artists Nguyễn Thị Thanh Cha and Nguyễn Văn Du. This is a table lamp made from paper and wood. These two lamps feature the eight different types of musical instruments in Sing Village folk paintings. This paper lantern won the top prize in the contest. Về kiểu dáng thì nó có thể là tạo nên một cái hình dạng gấp nhìn rất là làm mắt tạo thêm thành như là hình thành như cái mô đun vậy và khi mà gấp thì nó rất là gọn và có thể là trở thành một cái sản phẩm có tính công năng cho cái khách du lịch nếu như người ta mua và người ta vận chuyển đi đường xa cái yếu tố thứ hai là đó là lồng ghép được những cái yếu tố văn hóa Huế và ở trong một cái sản phẩm thì thông qua một cái sản phẩm mang tính ứng dụng này có thể giới thiệu về một cái nét văn hóa truyền thống đó là cái nét văn hóa tranh dân gian lăng sinh Two third prizes went to a set of five different kites made by Nguyễn Văn Hoàng and a bamboo cannon by Nguyễn Đình Hưng. Other unique products that deserve a mention are a set of dragon dishes made from wood and porcelain dishes featuring the local landscape. Qua cái hội thi thiết kế sản phẩm quà tặng vải liên điện Huế 2013 thì kết quả đạt được là rất là tích cực. Ban tổ chức là cũng đang đề nghị kiến nghị với ủy ban nhân tỉnh các ngành chức năng sẽ có cái hỗ trợ quan tâm đối với các cái sản phẩm vào trung khảo về hỗ trợ cho các cơ sở đầu tư thiết bị máy móc quảng bá các cái sản phẩm. 
The gift and souvenir market in Hue varies in quality and price, and there is a lack of local uniqueness. The contest has helped artists and artisans to create new gifts that successfully demonstrate the characteristics of Hue and its landscapes to visitors from all over the world. Businesses have already ordered 1,000 units of these unique designs, and local people will benefit from the production and sale of these gifts. There are many embroidery villages across Vietnam, but only Dong Kyu preserves and develops royal embroidered designs. Skilled craftsmen in Dong Kyu are renowned for the technique they use to restore ancient decorative patterns, which seems to be disappearing over the course of time. Let's visit this special village in our culture and lifestyle segment this week. These portents of a dragon and a phoenix were rooted under the Nguyen dynasty. Equal and sophisticated stitching show clearly the craftsman's meticulousness and skills. According to Nguyen Tezu, head of the Donggu Village Embroidery Association, to complete these portents can take months and the craftsmen have to work really carefully or they will damage the majesty of the costumes. <laughs> chúng tôi làm như thế là tám tám phượng như thế là cái họa tiết này như thế là phượng và dưới này là thủy ba sóng ngựa nếu mà cái hàng kỹ này như chúng tôi làm như thế là ba người làm thì phải phải hơn một tháng mới xong mà như thế là cái cái họa tiết nó rất cầu kỳ mà tuyển thợ như thế là thợ tay nghề cao thì mới làm được cái hàng này Over the past three centuries, Donggyu has been the only village in the northern region to restore the clothing of kings and lords under Vietnamese feudal dynasties. Royal designs are considered the pinnacle of traditional embroidery. Not only skill and experience, these royal costumes and portents also require careful choice of materials. Fabric and thread are only imported from famous traditional craft villages such as Van Phuc Silk Village or even overseas. You can easily find the image of the craftsmen sitting beside their embroidery frames in Donggu. Nguyễn Thị Nơ is now 62 years old and started embroidering when she was a small girl. She said she would preserve her ancestors' craft until she was no longer able to hold a needle. Tôi theo từ năm tôi 12 tuổi. Thế trước các cụ bố mẹ theo thì cứ học theo theo nghề của cha ông, cha truyền con nối từ ngày xưa chúng tôi thì có tuổi rồi thì cũng không học thương máy thì cứ theo tay nghề truyền thống của các cụ để lại thế giờ các cháu thì nghề của truyền thống của cha ông để lại thì là các cháu nó học đòi thôi cha truyền con nối chứ không phải nó bỏ đâu cản nghề Children in Donggu village also find the traditional craft interesting. This 16-year-old girl is focusing on her very first stitches. Em học theo từ năm em nó học lớp 4 ạ. Em thích nghề theo này để giữ lại nghề truyền thống của làng mình. Sau này lớn lên thì em muốn là phát triển nghề của mình quảng bá ra thế giới. At present, Donggu villagers mainly create ancient decorative portents on objects used in festivals and on costumes for artistic ensembles. To the number of customers visiting Donggu village during festival season is on the rise. Vì chúng tôi là trong phạm vi là theo là cũng đang muốn là nhờ bên chính quyền xong là là có một cái khu đất nào đấy để trong tôi là trưng bày sản phẩm thì như đồng thời như là là một cái điểm du lịch làng nghề thì khách mới biết được những cái 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 hàng tinh xảo như này. Over the last hundred years, embroidered royal clothing has gradually diminished along with the feudal dynasties. High-end products of the past, including royal clothing, are no longer popular, 
which has left Donggu Craft Village in the doldrums. In addition to the human factor, the village needs more support from local authorities to help promote the craft nationwide and around the world. Tuning into Culture Mosaic, our weekly journal featuring the rich cultural diversity of Vietnam and vibrant international cultural events happening around the country. We hope to become the bridge connecting artists and their works with our viewers out there. So don't go away, we'll have a lot more in this week's installment coming up for you in just a moment. Playing an instrument as a career is a rare thing to have. Achieving success with a musical career is even more difficult. But a Hanoi-born, India-based female guitarist has managed to accomplish that at only 36, while being a mother of two, a wife and a teacher at the same time. In this week's edition of On the Mic, VTV reporter Huyen Chi sits down with guitarist Le Thu, who will share with us her stories on the road to success. family. Lei Tu came to play guitar as naturally as others who learned to speak. When she was not yet four, she started learning guitar with her father, the late guitarist and painter Lei Hai. And at the age of five, she had her first public performance. At the age of seven, she became the youngest student to ever be admitted into the Vietnam National Academy of Music and started there for 15 years before she became a faculty member in 2002. I'm sitting here today with Hanoi-born India-based guitarist Lei Thu, who will share with us her secret on her musical success. Hello Lei Thu, and thank you so much for your time today. Uh, my first question for you is, how did you come to the guitar in the first place? Uh, hi Huyen Chi, hi on the audience who is uh, watching VTV4. Uh, I came to play guitar very naturally. Actually, guitar came to me very naturally. Actually, I listened to guitar when I was still in my mother's stomach, as my father said. And when I was a baby, sometimes when I cry, he used to uh, play guitar to make me happy. And then when I was three years old, he bought me a small, tiny guitar and just let me get used to it. And when I was four, I started to really play and I realized that I, I really love the instrument as the sound was very familiar, familiar to me. Many of our audience wonder what it takes to master an, an instrument. Can you tell us what it takes for you to get where you are now? Well, I think it's not only in guitar or in music, but uh, any job you are doing you, to be successful, you, you need to have love, to have patience, and you need to work hard for it. When I was small, I used to practice like six, seven hours a day beside school and all other homework. So uh, especially in this job, because you need to train not only uh, your knowledge about music, but also physically, you need a certain time a day to get the level. Over 30 years playing the guitar, Lei Tu has earned several national and international prizes in guitar competitions, including the Outstanding Asian Guitarist in Kakuta, India in November 2010, and two third place prizes in international guitar competitions in Thailand and Romania in June 2011. And you mentioned that you've been in a lot of competition shows internationally. Um, what did you learn from these competitions? You know, nowadays, the, one of the ways to, to get uh, further, to go further, is uh, study. Study is never ending, I believe. 
and uh, going places and joining on the international competition give me chance to get to know other musicians, to learn a lot, to uh, have more experience. And of course, winning prizes is, is important. But even if you are not winning, you, you still win. End of the day, that you get to be there and to see the world. In 2010, Leetu almost gave up her musical career when she moved to New Delhi, India, with her husband and two children. But as fate would have it, she eventually came back to playing and later teaching as the head of the guitar department at the Bridge Music Academy. In 2010, you moved to India with your family, and you only intended to be a homemaker at the time. Uh, how did you come back to music? Well, I didn't plan it. Uh, actually, in uh, one time, I, I walked into a music shop, a Yamaha music shop. I just wanted to buy some guitar strings. So I talked to the owner of the shop, and uh, because when I was in Vietnam, I used to teach in Yamaha school. So I talked to them that, uh, do they have any Yamaha music school here? And he said that not at the moment, but in the future, they are planning to, to open some music school. So he asked me, and... Uh, he got to know that I'm a guitarist, and he wanted to invite me to play a, a small performance to, to advertise for Yamaha Instrument. And in that performance, I got to meet uh, the director of the school that uh, I was teaching at the time. Now, as the mother of two, Leetu is balancing her roles as a mother, a wife, a teacher, and an artist all at the same time. Her two children, nine-year-old Chiara and six-year-old Stella, have both been playing the guitar since they were four years old. being a teacher and a mother and a musician and a wife and a homemaker at the same time? Well, my husband used to say that uh, what makes me an artist is not only playing guitar, but how to, to balance all of these things. And of course, when I travel, I need a lot of help from my family. And I must say that in this, I'm very lucky to have uh, a family who is always helping and supporting my career. Returning to Vietnam this time, Leetu has brought several performances to Hanoi audience. Her most recent performance with guitarist Wang Bing, Memories, centers back in time with classical pieces such as Alhambra by F. Terrega or Serenata Española by J. Malatz. Thực ra là rất lâu rồi ở Hà Nội mới có một show diễn, một live show mà guitar cổ điển hay như thế này. Cái mà mình cảm nhận ở người nghệ sĩ tức là cái cái lòng nhiệt huyết của họ khi họ chơi đàn ấy, cái niềm đam mê ấy và truyền truyền cho khán giả cái cả cái niềm đam mê đấy. And what message did you bring with your recent performance Memories? I think the name uh, Memories is uh, is very simple but it says a lot. Uh, memory, as a friend of mine, she used to say, memory could be sad, could be happy, but for sure it's beautiful. So we decide to take a memory as, as the name of the show. If and when you return to Vietnam, what do you hope to bring back to the Vietnamese musical scene? As I know that uh, nowadays, uh, more and more people started to learn classical guitar. Like uh, I got to visit a lot of school of my friends. I'm very happy to see that uh, that the level of the students are getting better and better. So uh, I hope that I could bring uh, what I've learned to what I've got to to study in all of those uh, international festivals and my own experience performing overseas to Vietnam. I hope that uh, there are more and more classical guitar concerts here and people will appreciate more. Thank you so much, Philithu, for answering all of my questions and for joining us here today. Best of wishes for the future. Thank you so much.
imagine being adorned in the most elegant of tuxedos, donning a top hat and polished shoes, all the while breaking out hip hop moves? Our connecting culture this week goes on a time travel to bridge the modern and the oldies in Hanoi performance featuring world champion dance crew from France, Pokemon. The Pokemon crew, let's go! Hailing from Lyon of France, the Pokemon crew formed in 1999. They gained global recognition after winning the 2003 International Battle of the Year in Germany. And now they've come to Vietnam with a new production. I'm here at the Youth Theater now in the capital city of Hanoi and on the stage is the Pokemon crew preparing for their performance to happen in about two hours now. And it's all very exciting because beyond just the hip hop and b-boy moves, which are already really cool, they're adding a lot of acrobatic movements that are found in movies back in the 1920s and 1930s. But let's now take a peek at their practice session. Break dancing, popping, and twirls. All to the charm of 1930s Broadway music. Pokemon crew looks to paying an M to dance and a tribute to cinema. Taking us back in time to the days of silent films. We found certain traces of hip-hop movements used in films during this time period began to question from where exactly the hip-hop originated, and there are a number of moves like head spinning and others that actually came from this early time period. The performance commences like an old film being wound up. giving the stage a black and white old charm feel. The nine-member crew dazzles audience with acrobatic dance moves. The most modern of breakdancing techniques and the occasional musical and comedic movements. The crew hopes to share that dance can be limitless. At this time, we are here to share with uh, people, every people. I think it's for every age, from 7 to 77, I think you can enjoy the show. And it's a very magic moment because I share all my energy, all my happiness, all my life with the audience. The performance, like a film, had its emotional and solemn moments as well, where lighting accentuated the continuity of movement. The night ended on another bridge connecting the Pokemon crew with Vietnam's top hip-hop dance group, Big Toe Crew. The diversity of movements took the house by storm. Vietnam is obviously very different from France, but I love it here. 
The food is amazing. Everyone's very open and warm. We had an amazing time at the end with the audience and the dancers. Beautiful moments. Khi mà được đứng ở trên sân khấu cùng giao lưu với các bạn thì mình cảm thấy uh, rất là tự hào và cảm thấy rất là thích bởi vì uh, cảm giác được cái sự gần gũi đối với cả các bạn dancer từ nước ngoài đến Việt Nam, niềm đam mê và cái uh, tâm huyết của họ đối với nhảy thật là lớn lao và mình cảm thấy rất hạnh phúc vì điều này.